Toto. I have a feeling we're Toto, I've got a feeling, got a bit of an inkling, this is gonna be one of those days. Hey Sam, two drums and a cymbal fall off a cliff. Mm. Toto, I've got a feeling, it could be bunnies. <laughs> I asked a question on Twitter, which was, out of the words moist, chunky, phlegm, and squirt, which was the most nicest to you? And it was kind of surprising, because even though chunky won as the best of the words, moist didn't lose. Turns out you love chunky, but you really hate phlegm. <coughs> Howdy, friendos, and welcome to the big bit of the show, where this week I'm reviewing a game that I've been waiting for for longer than the show has actually been a thing. Now, a thing about ADHD that you've probably already worked out intuitively is that we people of the ADHD persuasion aren't very good at the whole patience thing, so I'd go through cycles of being super hype for this and then just not caring at all, and then being super hype again. But now it's finally here, I can stop holding it in. It's here! It's Cuphead and it's here! It's finally here! Developed by Studio MDHR and released after a reasonable amount of controversy on September 29th, Cuphead is a mishmash of some of the toughest genres that arcade gaming has up its sleeve. It's got elements of run and gun, boss rush, bullet hell, and it's just waiting to take you down a peg or two, regardless of your skill level. Framed around the story of two pals, Cuphead and Mugman, who, due to their love of gambling, become indebted to the devil himself. You take control of the titular Cuphead, or Mugman if you're repping player 2, and are charged with reaping the souls of others who are yet to pay their dues to Satan. There is so much to love about Cuphead. It's got a complete aesthetic that, if you're into this sort of thing, it's hard not to fall head over heels. The graphical style is reminiscent of a 1930s cartoon. The backgrounds are beautifully hand-painted, and the animations painstakingly hand-animated with deliberate imperfections to deliberately go against the perfection typically sought in pixel-based graphical styles. Adding to the ultra-retro aesthetic is an absolutely bangin' soundtrack that, again, goes back to the swing music style that was popular in the 1930s. The composer, Christopher Madigan, has made a set of songs that could easily be released on a standalone album and, based on the conversations I've had on Twitter, if they updated them with a bit of an electro vibe, I wouldn't be the only one willing to pay for a copy. But, of course, a game can't stand on aesthetics alone, so it's great to see that the overall play experience is also really engaging. The stages are broken up into one of two styles, the run and gun, completing which unlocks paths through the map to get you to future stages, and the pseudo bullet hell style boss stages, the reward for winning which is one of the necessary soul contracts. Regardless of the stage you're playing though, one thing is guaranteed. This game is hard. This is absolutely by design, as the developers wanted to draw our thoughts back to the arcade parlours that would greedily suck the dollars from your pocket as you resolve to persevere. I think that's probably my favourite thing about Cuphead, really. It's the fact that it makes you absolutely bloody nose determined to beat it. It wants you to win, but it almost doesn't want you to figure that out. It throws enemy after enemy after attack after death after defeat at you, but each time you lose it presents you with a screen that shows your progress. It gives you hope, telling you exactly how close you were to beating the boss. You can see that each time you're getting that little bit farther through the stage, and then when you finally beat a level, you're rewarded with a rush of personal satisfaction that keeps you going on again. Cuphead is 20 bucks on Steam, and it's also available on Xbox, with a link to the Steam version in the description. Toto. I have a feeling that tornado was caused by climate change. <laughs>